it's been a while since I made a post office video. What I'm going to do is take these packages I sold on eBay to the post office. On the way home, I'm going to do some scavenging. See what I can find for you. This, can you tell what that is? Oh. <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> that is a skateboard dick I found in a video a while back. This was sitting by a dumpster. Um, it was a vision, something or other, skateboard dick, and uh, sold it for like $58, free shipping minus ebay fees uh okay so i actually went to the post office yesterday and uh i didn't have the weights right because my unbreakable scale i claimed with the exception of the electronics going bad one of my cats put a perfectly placed barf right on the back of the scale right into the electronic plug it's like a telephone plug where the scale readout plugs into the heavy duty metal scale went right down in there and <laughs> Hasn't worked right since. So, anyways, long story short, I didn't have the weights right. I thought I could change it to post office, but I couldn't. Anyways, I came home yesterday from the post office, and let's have a look at some of the stuff I found off camera. That is nice, nice little basket. It's got, as far as I can see, it's got one busted, one busted deal, maybe two. But it's nice. That'll go free tail swag a leg. And then uh, got some scrap metal here, of course. Old aluminum blinds. This will be my next trip to the scrapyard. So I was coming home from the post office and I found a like a junk, two junk, two different junk drawer dumps. There's a piece of that basket right there. So, uh, oh no, dang it! <laughs> Some poker chips. Okay. Let's see, I don't want to mess with this right now. So, of course, it's the white ones, the ones that'll get dirty the most. Okay, get those out of there. Package 100 poker chips. Some scrap metals. Oh, that might rain. Let's see. Little thing of yarn for the crafters. The stuff disappears from the free tail store. It's got a mystery box here. I'm not sure what's in it. Let's see. Take like scrap it out of me. <laughs> and then, uh, like I said, the junk drawers can be real interesting. So I found in there. Let's see, let's bring this over here. Just in case it rains. I'll do it out here because there's no light back there. Okay. Little Tiffany box with a little Tiffany bag. That probably had like a bracelet or something in it. There's nothing in it. But I figured I'd throw that in a free tail store. The Tiffany stuff is pretty valuable. Probably sell that box for a dollar at the gross at a gross or something. <laughs> That's probably a two hundred dollar bracelet or something. So let's see what else we got here. This little camera was in there. Sometimes these cameras will have an SD card and that one does. It's got a bonus. I was just grabbing the stuff, not really paying attention or not really looking at it too close. But, uh, look at that. Two gigabyte bonus, bonus card for me. What do you think about that? So uh, I'm gonna take that inside. So when I do this, I always keep people's personal information private. Of course, that's number one deal. Um, let's see. This is one of my favorite things to find, scavenging. <laughs> that is six unused stamps. Those are forever stamps. So I could use these 30 years from now. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to find. I don't think I've bought a stamp in 10 years. <laughs> I have a small stockpile of those. Although it's dwindling. 
and then uh, a couple of these little paper clip guys and uh, a little look at that little baby wrench that's actually steel that's a that's a real wrench I thought that was kind of cool a little baby screwdriver a little uh, flashlight keychain flashlight it's also got a laser pointer for cats but the laser doesn't work flashlight works look at that uh, I think the ring's busted off of it. But, eh, it's a little flashlight. I'm gonna keep that on my rig for a while so it stops working or goes dead. And then the, there's some farkles in there and a brass key. 35, 45, 51 farkles, a brass key. And uh, I haven't looked at that too close yet, but uh, those look like pearls and diamonds. <laughs> So it can get kind of ridiculous sometimes. Um, that's not magnetic at all. So I'm actually gonna put this back in my pocket. Let's see, those pearls, it's, it's easy to tell if pearls are real. You uh, feel them with your teeth. And if they have kind of a gritty, sandy feeling, they're real. Now these are fake pearls. I can tell right away, because they're just totally smooth. But I'm still going to take that inside just to verify it's not some kind of uh, 10 karat gold or something. But fake pearls, cubic zirconia, most likely. But still, <laughs> I'm still going to put that under the microscope. Also in there was uh, these little paper rockets book. Uh, origami is what the word I'm trying to spit out of my face. <laughs> origami books. Those are pretty cool. Uh, this one says paper rockets. I think it's for building paper airplanes. Yeah, look at it. This book's all specific about building, building aircraft. That's pretty cool. So I'll put these in the free tail start. You know what? I'm actually actually hold on to these for a while. <laughs> I might get bored one day. This uh I went to the post office down the road this way, so I don't want to retrace my steps that I made just 18 hours ago, 20 hours ago. So I'm gonna go to the post office over in this part of town, run another route back home. All right, let's hit the road. I haven't even made it to the post office yet. This is the first dumpster I looked in. <laughs> uh, these are uh, VTEC cartridges for little kids. It's a VTEC uh, learning computer deal. Those are actually worth some decent money. I'll probably lock those up and sell those on eBay. Disney, Winnie the Pooh, and Little Brits. It's a as far as I know, it's a VTEC first computer type learning device for little little tots. Cheap little plastic keyboard. There's some uh, work boots back there. Look like they're pretty, pretty decent. They're not quite, kind of, kind of dirty. I don't know if the GoPro can pick that up. Looks like they 
they're, they're almost free they're almost free tail really but uh I see some little specks of mold on there, I think, so I'm not a big fan of putting mold in the free tail store. There's actually uh, a little bit of silver in these keyboards. There'll be a thing they call a mylar. It's like a piece of plastic, but uh, it's not very much in there. But if you wanted to have a project and take out 12 little screws to get uh, 10 cents worth of silver, it's in there for sure. Actually, silver price is going up. So when prices go up, this stuff gets more practical to do it's not it's not the kind of silver that you can just take out and go, oh look at this I have silver it's a silver that needs to be refined Alrighty, so I live that way. I'm actually gonna spin out here about a quarter mile. Industrial Park is over there if you watched my most recent video. There's two really nice apartment complexes. And then west of that, there's a whole nother little town, a whole big route I have out there. So I, I don't think I'm gonna go that far. But uh, these two apartment complexes, I may spin back to the industrial zone. It's been two days, three days. Saturday this is Tuesday three days I may go through there again but there's a plethora of possibilities on the way home so As you can see, I came off 
without my second tote today too busy flapping my lips making a video Put that pan there so this thing doesn't if i stop fast this thing doesn't come up and bump me in the back of the head farkle double farkle so if you're following along on the, the bitcoin adventure up here i have bitcoin gold silver copper maybe i'll add farkle <laughs> Farkle will always be worth one. One Farkle will always be one Farkle. Okay, uh, Farkles are money I find on the ground. My battery died. That is the fastest I've ever had a battery die. It's pretty cold out there, so I have to agree with the battery. <laughs> Get myself a hot cup of porridge. Kish. Kish. Hi, everybody. I like milk bones. They're delicious. They're delicious. What's going on, Grizz? You like this? You want some of these? Special Grizz porridge? Special treat just for Breeze. There you go, man. <laughs> so I found some more stuff on the way home and uh, I'm gonna fire this up for the kitty cats. This winter I've started, I think I ruined my walk because it's rusting out with water sitting in it, but oh well. This winter, I've gotten a habit of doing this. It's dangerous, I suppose, if you don't keep track of it, if the water goes out. But uh, I probably don't recommend doing this. But see all that nice steam going into the air? It's nice. It gets real dry in here, so it's pretty slick. And uh, I found some more stuff. So after I finish this, which will be two seconds to you, an hour to me. Go outside and have a look at it. You got a package? Yeah, I know. Hi, <laughs> sugar pie. Well, I didn't. I didn't get the package. Oh, look at this little pooch. No, you're not sure. I'm a chihuahua and it's cold outside. I okay. Got the banana fruit basket. Yeah, I found a couple of these things. Uh, Old, uh, old radios. I'm making a video. I'm talking to the camera. Oh. Take these brass aluminum or uh, brass uh, antennas off here. That one's already gone. Look at that. That's probably why thrown away. We think. But uh, I thought those in my tin shed, and uh, that'll go with brass, of course. Sometimes they're steel. Usually they're brass. I went back and got that keyboard. Uh, if silver's gonna go up to a hundred dollars an ounce, then uh, I'm gonna start hoarding these things I'm not gonna go to the trouble of taking all the screws out I'm just gonna take all the keyboards and I'm just gonna find a spot in my storage unit and I'm just gonna start stacking them because uh, there's a big difference between the price of silver and uh, the price of silver if it goes up to a hundred so 
I've always in the past I've always just said these are garbage and it's not really worth your time and blah 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 but if it's different strokes for different folks but uh I'm not going to uh you know situations change you know uh I I might do stuff that other people don't want to do and other, and other people do stuff that that I'm, I really don't want to do but when it comes to the prices going up that narrative starts to change so uh like I say, I'm not going to, uh, let's see, three, six, nine, 13 screws. So I'm not gonna take the time to do that, but I'm gonna start hoarding these because silver is in there without a doubt. And I found this uh, junk and uh, I found a bunch of phones in the dumpster right before the, right after the battery died. These phones have a nice little uh, circuit board in them. They'll have gold. Uh, that's kind of a cheap one. So the cheaper the phone, the cheaper the board. But you know those, those phones like uh, in a big office building, might be on a reception desk or something, the great big ones, they're all fancy. Those will have awesome boards in them. But uh, so there's gold plates. See all that gold plate in there? That's gold. There's gold right up there. So silver and gold we have here, just in this short little video. So e-waste bin is a hoarder of e-waste like this. See all the gold plate in there. And he's been doing it for a long time. I haven't watched his recent videos. I assume he's still just hoarding it. You know, he's not actually refining it. He just hoards it away. So I'm going to start hoarding all my silver, all my gold, all my gold plate like this. Uh, these are telephone cords, of course, and all every one of them, for the most part, is going to have. See that? That is gold plate. So, if gold and silver go up, then uh, it just becomes more worth it, you know. Um, let's see here. Oh, and copper. All these cords are copper. So silver, gold, copper. Every one of these cars has copper in it. Copper, like that, see that? That is copper and that is good stuff. So, I'm, this is really cold out here, so I'm probably gonna take this inside. I'm running out of light too, so I'm probably gonna take this inside and finish the video. I'm, I'm gonna take that silver mylar out of there if you wanna see that. These phones, this is how I take these apart. <laughs> see, how, see those gold plates in there? Gold plate of pins in there. This one actually has a bunch of screws in it. Those are safety screws as well. That's, this one might be built a little different. Uh, this one's a little stronger than a typical one. So that's just a that's just a goofy little circuit board but see that that is gold plate without a doubt and then see these little chips there's uh those are valuable <laughs> i am not anywhere near being an expert on this e-waste chip stuff but i assume that there is some sort of precious metals or some such something or other in those chips i'll put e-waste bin channel link down in the description and you can watch some of his videos and he will tell you what every single one of these little doodads is see i think there's that might be gold or copper on there but anyways those are definitely gold plated pins so i am going to start hoarding all that stuff i mean i've been hoarding a lot of this e-waste a lot of these circuit boards to begin with but i'm just going to start Hoarding these keyboards and things I don't have silver. I'm not gonna take my time to process them But if I had been saving these for a decade, you know, I'd have probably tens of thousands of them So, you know, maybe the day comes where I do put up a little One-man production line and just zippity doo dah through these on one day You know 
when the price is up five times one day it's <laughs> obviously becomes five times more worth it so and that may be happening so uh so up here we've got farkel in this video we got copper in this video we got silver in this video we got gold in this video and now bitcoin so the thing with gold and silver and, and diamonds and that kind of stuff it's kind of being well particularly diamonds without a doubt the supply is intentionally being held under check to make them valuable because <laughs> there's actually a lot of diamonds out there but uh gold and silver the, the, those prices are basically being controlled by humans bitcoin the last one i'm talking about here bitcoin set me is a wild goose and that wild goose is on the loose bitcoin is uncontrollable uh people can't really regulate it people can't really do anything about it maybe the day comes when when the people start losing the their power maybe they'll just call you a criminal and make it illegal to own it and throw you in jail for having it but that day is nowhere near today so <laughs> i'm gonna go inside and i'm gonna take apart this keyboard and i'm gonna do a quick few minutes on bitcoin i do believe the price of bitcoin is about to about to soar i'm not a financial advisor but you might be a fool not to have a hundred dollars worth of it right now today <clears throat> here's the keyboard i took all the screws out it's gonna look something like this on almost every keyboard i think pretty much all keyboards uh, keyboards this like this anyways will be basically be very similar uh there should be two sheets of this in here. There should be two sheets. Yeah, let's get no, that's two. Two sheets of this. Uh, piece of garbage. But that right there is the silver. So that has to go through a refining process. And yeah, there's plenty of videos on YouTube if you want to search it out and check it out. If you do get into stuff like that, be very, very careful don't ever breathe fumes uh, a lot of stuff's real dangerous so be very careful i've seen people refining gold with stuff on their kitchen counter deadly chemicals it's just it's not cool so be very very careful and, uh, try to watch a video from a pro uh, some sort of professional level but anyways that's what they're after that's the silver those are the silver mylars and keyboards so uh that's it and i forgot to show you inside these cell phones or cell phones inside these old plastic phones this one was built a little different usually when i pop them on the concrete they'll just fall apart and the contents will just spill out this one is actually holding together but this is also in these phones and i'm pretty sure that is also mylar that's a one stubborn phone see look at that screw right there <laughs> come on boy it's exciting y'all got your attention I know, crinkly stuff. Crinkly stuff. We think real. So the point I was getting to, and uh, I was kind of waiting for this to pop out of the phone, but it didn't. I'm pretty sure there's a little silver in this as well. I can't, I can't really find anything online. If you want to search it out, you might be able to find something. But uh, I do believe here and there, like see, see that parallel line running horizontal right there? I do believe that is silver as well. Uh, see right there, there's a couple lines going vertical. And then this is the gray, silvery looking stuff. <clears throat> To me, it looks like that. So I'm pretty sure this is also a mylar that contains some amount of silver. See all the gray, the, the light gray, silvery color stuff. I'm not sure what the dark gray stuff is on this one, but see, see that, see the difference. Like right there, a little squiggly line. I'm pretty sure it's silver. So maybe these, there's actually quite a bit of silver in there once you start looking. 
Um, maybe these phones are also something you want to uh, hold back. I don't know the process to get the silver out. I don't know if this would foul it up or what. But let's see if there's two of them here. And there's just one, I think. Anyways, the phones are definitely worth looking at. Phone, those phones will have a little bit of gold in them, just in the gold pins. So, uh, they're real easy to open up. Maybe you don't want to use my method, but <laughs> I always wear eye protection. Um, in my videos, 99% of the time in my videos you watch, I'm, I'm wearing eye protection. So, uh. I probably don't mention that enough. Always protect your eyes. Flying bits can get you. Basically anytime I'm riding a scooter, I have eye protection on. So, uh, yeah, shoot, when I zoom out, there's actually, when I get the right angle on the light there, there's actually quite a bit of the silver stuff in there. I assume it's silver. Don't hold me to that, but it sure does look a lot alike. Anyways, that would be something to look into. Let me get this mess cleaned up away from my cats. And we'll get to Bitcoin. Bitcoin on the top here. I'm just going to recommend a couple channels that are already built and ready to give you the good information. I'm just going to give two channels here. In, in previous videos, I mentioned some of these other people, but they get into day trading, and that's dangerous. And... Uh, when I recommended those channels, I was just, I mean, you can listen to these guys, some of these day traders, because they give out, you know, good, fresh news, but uh, I would definitely wouldn't recommend doing what they do. <laughs> they're, they're extremely, extremely, extremely qualified, experienced professionals, and that's not what I do. I invest, and uh, anyways, long story short, I'm going to give you a couple, I'm going to give you two channels in this video to watch. One is Cryptos Are Us, and the link for that is down in the description. This dude is good. He gives out the news. He's been in it for a long time, and uh, there's a lot of, there's just flat out lies. They call it FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. News stories that the big guys, the, they intentionally spread to try to keep the price down. It's, it's just... If you watch these two channels I'm telling you about, they they will give you their honest, the honest news. They will talk to you about reality. <laughs> Whether it be good or bad, they will tell you. They won't. As far as I've seen so far, they will not lie to you. And there's actually, there's people out there that, that flat out lie about Bitcoin. Two reasons, mainly, is one, the people that have been negative towards Bitcoin for 10 years, they're, they've been flat out wrong, and it's just embarrassing to them. They could have bought it at a dollar, and now it's at 30, 31700 today. So <laughs> they're embarrassed, they're wrong, so they're never going to change. They're just going to keep saying the same things they've been saying for, for 10, 11 years, because they just have to keep saying it. They wanna, don't want to admit they're wrong. So it's that, and then there's the second reason is a lot of these big whales, they want to keep the price down for as long as possible so they can get in. And they want to scare the death out of people like me and you, the smaller people. They want you, people that are holding Bitcoin now, they want to make them try to sell. So there's a lot of, a lot of, just, I'll just say lie. I mean, it's a lie. A lie is a lie. There's no need to, to sugarcoat it. There's people out there lying to your face, telling you Bitcoin is some terrible thing and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there will be a day in probably six to ten months, six to twelve, thirteen months, where where Bitcoin does go down. It's a natural cycle, but uh, for today, I'm just going to give you this guy. Cryptos are us. Link down in the description. And the second one, I'd like for you to watch if you're interested. I'm not a financial advisor, but I am pretty sure that Bitcoin is about to go through the roof. It might not happen for another month or two. It might not start for another month or two. And you might hear some terrible stories about this Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. But uh, a lot of what it is is the natural cycle of Bitcoin. It goes with peaks and it comes down. And 
people get scared and they hear these bad stories and they, they panic sell and they lose a bunch of money because they panic sell. And then they tell all their friends and family that Bitcoin's just a, a Ponzi scheme and a scam. Whereas if they were just held on to whatever they bought, <laughs> they, they wouldn't have lost anything. And in the future, in the coming months, they would double, triple, quadruple, five, six, seven, maybe 10, maybe 20 times their money. No, we're not, not sure how high it's gonna go. But uh, this is the Bitcoin's a real deal. There are corporations and, and Ivy League schools like Harvard and Brown and Yale. We've just found out they've they're literally been putting money into Bitcoin for over a year now without telling anybody. And there's Mass Mutual, a super old insurance company. Uh, crypto crypto news alerts is the second one I'd like I put the link down in the description if you want to check it out these two channels are guys that just focus on the news they're kind of basically macro investors which is what I do and uh, they'll show charts and stuff sometimes but they're they're not they're not gonna go like go out on psycho day trading videos and <laughs> try to get people to day trade these guys are basically just stick to the news and tell you how it is. So these two channels, Crypto's News Alerts is the second one. This guy's pretty good. He, if it's bad or good, he'll tell you. As far as I've seen, he'll at least be honest to you. And there's some really FUD stories out there. And these two guys will clear up the FUD for you. Because there are people trying to scare people out of Bitcoin. Right now, it's at all-time high. There's, there's, they call them whales, just like millionaires and billionaires. They're just buying, just snatching this stuff up, this Bitcoin up off the over-the-counter market. So it doesn't really affect the, the everyday stock price. And they're just, they're just snapping it up. Uh, I mean, BlackRock is getting into it. I mean, some, the big, some of the biggest names in investing in the world are getting into Bitcoin. They're buying Bitcoin, like BlackRock. Uh, JP Morgan starting to get into it. Uh, Guggenheim's starting to get into it. Guggenheim's one. They came out and said Bitcoin should be worth 400000 based on their fundamental work. And then, <laughs> like a week later, the same guy comes out, this, this Scott Miner guy, and comes out and says Bitcoin should be worth 20000 because they're not, they're not able to buy it until January 31st. So, <laughs> they, want the, they want the price to crash and that happened on January 21st. Four FUD stories came out, and they're all they're all all inaccurate. Well, three are inaccurate. Well, I mean, different levels of lies, um, and just just basically their stories just and created to just drive down the price of Bitcoin. And for the most part, it's because those people want to actually buy it. But uh, like Guggenheim was one example. I mean, <laughs> guy says it's worth four hundred thousand. A week later, he says it should be twenty thousand. But but someday it'll be four hundred thousand. So he he realized he messed up. Uh, but anyways, these guys, these two channels, I'm telling you about, they will tell you how it is. That way, I don't have to uh, do it in my videos in a way where I drive away my viewers because a lot of my viewers are really think this is really boring. But uh, Crypto News Alerts and Cryptos Are Us are the two news style channels. Let me show you. This, retail investors he put this out video this today. Day. This is a powerful signal that the present Bitcoin bull. Bitcoin. Oh, there's a lot of scams. Don't I wouldn't even respond to any ads you see on videos related to Bitcoin. And down in the comments of Bitcoin videos, there will be People that want you to call, never, like, like, that's not one, I'm not going to look for them, but never ever call anyone, never, never reply to anyone in the comment sections of Bitcoin videos, because, you know, gold and diamonds are valuable. What happens to gold and diamonds if you leave them unprotected? They get stolen immediately. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin is that. Bitcoin is gold and diamonds, and probably even much, much more valuable. So lots of people want to steal Bitcoin is my point <laughs> um so there's countries there's there's literally countries governments out there that are gearing up with huge computer farms to mine the last like two and a half million bitcoin 
there's only gonna be 21 million ever that exists and uh, uh -huh. built in its early stages a key characteristic so there's only like two and a half million Bitcoin left to be mined. So basically these giant computers have to solve puzzles to, to win the Bitcoin. It's a long, long story. There's there's uh, documentaries on YouTube that you, you want to watch. It's just way too much information for me to even try to start explaining it. But anyways, the moral of the story is why are there, why are there literally countries and governments of countries that are gearing up these massive multi maybe million or billion dollar pro projects to mine the last two and a half million bitcoin that's because bitcoin is extremely valuable <laughs> and you will hear story you will hear stories and i'm sure most of the people listening to this video already have it somewhere in the mind that bin that bitcoin is some kind of fake thing ponzi scam scheming blabberty blab terrible bad i'm sure it's already ingrained in your brain and people are doing that intentionally, but there, there are literally governments out there gearing up to get a piece of the next two and a half million Bitcoin. And it's going to take over a hundred years to get the rest of them. So a hundred years from now, one Bitcoin might be worth a billion dollars or something stupid. So <laughs> point I'm getting to is, is they wouldn't be gearing up on these massive computer farms. Like, unless, unless this was going to be super valuable. So like here's this this guy's video he put out today bitcoin 2021 market outlook report predicts seven hundred thousand dollar bitcoin by the end of this year forty thousand is only the beginning we had a all-time high forty thousand a couple weeks ago since then it's slid down to 31 but uh that's healthy you don't want it to go up constantly this is really bad news so Come, going up to 40, 41, and then dropping down to 30 is actually this is actually the best thing that can happen. And this this bull run of 2021 hasn't started yet, so I'm 99.9% .9 sure Bitcoin is going to go well over $100,000 by the end of the year. But uh, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor, and in that 0.1% where where I could be wrong, there's there's things that could happen. You know, I mean a giant solar flare <laughs> the, the things that could happen in the immediate in, in this in this coming 12 months that could be bad for bitcoin basically are the kinds of things where you need canned food you know maybe a couple thousand dollars worth of canned food and water in your kitchen those kind of events are basically the only thing that can affect bitcoin in the next 12 months They call him Spunkmar. Boy, you better stop yelling at people. What is it? Come on. Tommy Spunkmar. Boy, you getting awfully rascally. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up there. From what I've seen, these two guys will uh, give it to you straight. Now, I don't know them personally, but. I've been watching them for a little while now, and they seem like uh, pretty solid guys. So, those two have a look. If you want to keep, they they put out videos daily and keep you up to date. So I think I said what I need to say, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching. Come here, boy. Boy, you better you better stop howling, stuff. You better stop howling, boy. I'm gonna tell you what. Make me, make me tell you what. Oh, I tell you what, boy. Make me tell you what.